Lawrence Okoli makes it 4-0 with four knockouts and all four knockouts happening in the first round so far in his professional career with a, another first round win over Russ Henshaw. Okoli is different to his fellow Olympian Joshua Boatsi. I talked about this in Boatsi's post-fight uh, video. Boatsi is far more polished than Lawrence Okoli. He was in the amateur system for longer. And just the way his body is configured helps him maintain a more tidy, neat, balanced style than Lawrence Okoli. But I did say in that video that in my view, Joshua Boatsi, he has a certain degree of power, but I don't think he's really one of those guys who's naturally extremely heavy-handed. Lawrence Okoli, on the other hand, he is. He strikes me as someone who is naturally very heavy-handed. His technique looks all over the place at times, particularly his footwork. Um, he can look quite clumsy and ungainly at times when he's throwing his shots. Can look a bit novicey at times, but he has natural power. He's naturally, you know, he is naturally heavy-handed, Lawrence Okoli. I've got no doubt in my mind about that. Yes, he's been knocking over journeymen in his four, first four fights, but these are journeymen who have been rounds with other people. You know, these are not journeymen that get knocked out in the first round every time. These are journeymen who have been rounds with prospects of similar experience level to Lawrence Okoli. So he's knocking people over very, very quickly, doing it in the first round. In this particular fight, it was to the body. He was landing nice, sharp, crisp body shots. And he got Ross Henshaw out of there. He went down. He didn't want none of it. So, yeah, Akoli, he has holes. He has gaps in his technique. He has flaws. He can look ungainly, sloppy, so on and so forth. But the height that he has, six feet five, the punching power, the natural punching power he has is going to make him dangerous against anybody. It's going to need to take a pretty defensively responsible fighter with boxing ability and or punching power to be able to beat Lawrence Okoli. Because a 6'5 with very long arms and serious punching power, you're going to have to do something <laughs> you know, to try and contain what Lawrence Okoli has. Unless you're as tall as he is, then boy, you better have some defense about you. Because you don't want to be getting hit with them big clubbing shots that Lawrence Okoli throws. You do not want to be getting hit with those. The guy can seriously bang. Uh, a lot of people want to point out the flaws in Okoli. I've seen this online. Oh, he's an accident waiting to happen. He's this, that and the other. They see flaws in technique and they think that's it. End of game over. He's not going to go anywhere because he's got these flaws in his technique. Totally ignoring the things that he does well. Which is the punching power. It's not just about... Okoli having to worry about flaws in his own technique. His opponents are going to have to worry about his very, very heavy hands and six foot five inch frame. They're going to have to worry about that. Top fighters are going to have to worry about it. <laughs> All right, this guy can punch and he's very tall. He's got long arms. It's like with Deontay Wilder. I remember when Deontay Wilder was all set to fight Berman Stavern. The amount of people who are picking Stavern to knock Wilder out, it was probably the majority. Because they were saying Wilder makes too many mistakes. He's sloppy. Stavern's got better technique. But again, they're totally ignoring the fact that Wilder is way taller than Stavern. Way quicker, in terms of foot speed at least, than Stavern. Got way longer arms than Stavern. And he can punch. Yes, he's sloppy. Yes, he windmills when he gets excited and gets a fighter hurt. But he does a lot of things good as well. But they totally ignored all that and focused in on the fact that Wilder windmills and that means he's going to lose to Stavern. It don't work like that, people. Stavern had to worry about what Wilder was bringing to the table. And I guess you guys who were picking Stavern in a fight, you didn't worry about that. What Wilder was bringing to the table. And people are still making that same mistake with Wilder even now. Obsessing about this windmill stuff. People, when he's cracking you in the jaw with those right hands, it's not funny no more. You know, Brian Jennings can laugh all he likes and <laughs> all these other fighters. If they were getting cracked in the jaw by... Wilder's extremely hard right hand, they wouldn't be laughing. 
<laughs> Stavern wasn't laughing when he went down in the second round. I believe that weren't called a knockdown. I can't remember now, but he was certainly very hurt in that second round. Lawrence Akoli could be something similar. He's not as wild as Wilder. Certainly hasn't been so far, but he does appear clumsy and sloppy at times and does rush in. And, he, and he's going to need to stop rushing in. Let's not get it twisted. He's going to need to stop rushing in. He's very anxious to get the job done and he's very anxious to get big punches landed quickly. He's going to need to be a bit more circumspect when he steps up his level of competition. But don't underestimate the attributes that Lawrence O'Colley brings to the table and how dangerous those attributes are. That's all I'm saying to you. So he's got a long way to go. I'm not expecting Lawrence O'Colley to finish his career as an undefeated fighter or anything like that. But I do think there's talent there. I do like the punching power. And that six foot five inch frame with the long arms, a cruiserweight, if used correctly, that can be a real, real big plus for Lawrence O'Colley. So onwards and upwards he goes, four wins, four knockouts, all four knockouts in the first round. Will he continue that this streak in his next fight? We'll see. Let me know what you thought of Lawrence O'Colley's performance here. How would he match up against Isaac Chamberlain? Isaac Chamberlain fought on the same card, so they're obviously trying to build towards that fight, both promoted by Eddie Hearn. So, uh, yeah, let me know how you feel, people. It's happening, I'm out.